And this arm would help. Okay, you're on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open up the um, Economic Development Board meeting at 5.02. Can I get a motion to open the meeting? Motion to open. Okay, and second? Aye. All in favor? Okay. So the first item on the agenda is the missions in charge of the committee. And I know we have maybe one or two people on Zoom. We'll just check, double check in with them. Brian? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, I, I, I've been sneezing and coughing. I think you didn't need me next year. No problem. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for not um, sitting by me. <laughs> anyone else on Zoom do you know? I don't think so. Okay. All right. So the mission in charge of the committee. So basically, what do we want to do with the committee? Anyone have any ideas? What they'd like to do with it, like to see? Um, Go ahead. Well, I do know that the mission statement that was sent out, um, the draft that was sent out yep. a couple of weeks ago, I yep. thought it was really good. It okay. said, um, I thought it hit all the, the points. major points. Yep. Um, um, beyond that, I'm not sure, but. So do you want to go and adopt the draft and we'll work off of that for the time being? I mean, I'm good with that. I read through it a couple yep. of times um, and nothing stood out to me as missing. Yep. Uh, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, same here. I, I thought it was a well-written draft. I think it, uh, you know, it has, has uh, a lot of specifics, but a, but a pretty broad generality, too. So, you know, if there was anything that wasn't within it, it's, it's really only a vision statement, so that doesn't necessarily mean you can't do things beyond its purpose. So right. I mean, I'd, be, I'd be fine with just the document. Okay. Steve, any on that? You good with it? I'm good with it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, can I get a motion to a, a, um, adopt the mission statement for our board? I move to adopt the mission statement that was drafted in advance of this meeting. Okay. Steve, I second it. I second it. Okay. All in favor? What happened? All uh -huh. remote. All remote. Okay. So, Brian. You good with it? Adopting it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Steve, you good? Yes. I'm good? Yes. Good? Okay. Uh. So we're all good? All right. So next item is the board member task. Does anyone want to have, like, I know Steve, you've talked about doing, like, maybe doing the community events, head up that type thing? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to help with that. Okay. I'm busy, so yeah. it's, like, uh, it's hard for me, but um, I'm, I'm, I just need to be reminded when yep. things are going on, you know. Yep. And me and Rebecca talk a lot through email when it comes to that, so that's very helpful. Okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help with that. And I'm happy to offer some support mm -hmm. in that capacity as well. Okay. And Brian? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I missed what the. Uh, so we're talking about the task of the board. I was asking Steve if he kind of wanted to, you know, do the community events and keep an eye on that and. And what have you, and then as a board, would would take care of community events, come up with some ideas for community events, and adopt them. I know we're doing pumpkin fest right now, but after that, we could work with Rebecca in um, in the town. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm all in. In fact, I was just mentioning to Rebecca, you know, we we got uh, notified that uh, we're going to be doing the pumpkin fest, which sounds like it's going to be a blast. Yep. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Hey, Charlie's going to get this pumpkin fest. He heard it. He heard it. I think I'm going to submit my form, drop off my pumpkin. I saw that. You got Charlie's vote. There you go. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll work on that, but maybe as we go along, we can have Steve. We'll talk to you about it. Maybe you can work on that end of it. Yep, that sounds good. There's a girl in town that likes doing it. I call her the mayor, Sarah Sheehan. You know her? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. She'll, 
She'll gladly help. Like she's done uh, an unbelievable job for the pumpkin vessel. I'll tell you that. Yep. Okay. Do we have anything we want to do? Like, I know Pumpkin Fest, but do we want to talk about another event? Like, maybe Christmas event or a fall event or anything? Well, uh, think it's too soon? I never think it's too soon, personally. Yeah. It, then things tend to creep up on you really quickly. Um, so I don't think it's too soon to start talking about Christmas. Yep. But, um, I mean, I can, I'm happy to jump in and help and follow previous yep. years. Um, if you want to put me in contact with someone, since I'm very new to they're just really new in general so um but definitely i don't i don't think it's too soon to start okay. talking about it so rebecca i know that what there was some ideas thrown around has it gone anywhere with christmas yet at all or no not really so we have a holiday lights um type of event that we've well not event but we have a holiday um decoration type thing that we're starting to initiate where we're lighting up the trees in the square we've talked about at the last meeting as we mentioned you know getting businesses to uh, dedicate like a present on a on one of the light posts and try and advertise businesses but also get something pretty neat for the town and, and pretty uh, characteristic of a small town type of feel kind of thing so um, we have started initiating conversations specifically with the Grover Municipal Light Department they've been absolutely fantastic and they've been kind of leading that charge uh, the general manager Kevin Snow had mentioned that he was driving through Raleigh and saw them have a, a bunch of decorations and kind of was like why don't we do that here so he was really the one that inspired that and we kind of went with it last minute last year. So um, I know he's ordered lights and started that effort, but we haven't really talked about an event. I know originally talking with Brian and his team um, last year, they talked about maybe trying to do some type of pop-up event in the square, um, whether it be like hot chocolate and a visit with Santa and the gazebo and things like that. So I know that was an idea that he had brought forward last year and it was just too much of a quick turnaround in order to get everything situated. So I don't think it, we were very successful, but. Um, I know that, that Brian had mentioned he's pretty big into the holiday season, so maybe that's something that he might want to explore again. Um, and on, on that note, do you want to, like, for the board, do you want to initiate, like, a subcommittee where that subcommittee would then, you know, like, you know, Monica and Steve had mentioned they wanted to work more on the community events and put together a list and then report back to the board in terms of what they were thinking or people that would show interest? Or what do you want to do when you assign tasks? What are you essentially looking for? in terms of the the way that's carried out i was envisioning if someone say brian wanted to take the task for christmas or something have him come back to the board and say hey i you know i'm thinking this this and this you know what i mean steve say he wanted to do pumpkin fest or something and then come to the board and talk i mean do we also want to talk to rec on this as well maybe the, brian or steve or at the time could talk to like another board or whatever let them be the liaison type person that would go out and put the failures out Maybe, I don't know, you guys tell me. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm friendly with the light I mean, department. I just think what I was trying to do is I was trying to walk out of this meeting, letting everyone know their little pot, what they're gonna do to contribute, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not trying to put more work on someone that's already self-employed or whatever, but we all can work as a team, but I think we need that one person that will say, okay, I'll take care of this, you know what I mean? You guys think that's good? Uh, yeah. You go with that? Yeah, no, Brian? totally. Um, okay. So that being said, Brian, do you want to try and work on the Christmas end of it? With yeah, yeah, we're 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 all we're all right. So. All right, all right, and we're here, obviously. And if we can put that down for an agenda item for next meeting, we can discuss it again. And that <clears throat> that being said, um, you know, I would like to, as far as my role, I would like to try and work on the more on the business end of things like um which we're going to be coming up on it but more trying to get the businesses together more trying to get like um, meetings like we talked about last meeting and stuff like that um trying to see what the businesses have a meeting with them see what they need uh what their plans are you know what i mean try to make business more friendly in town i mean as a board but i might try to head that up on that end and then come into the board and we all work as a um collaborative yeah, yeah collaborative together. To, get, to get it done so if it's all right i would take that on i mean it's probably a bigger role but um I'm, I'm in town a lot so i could probably hit people up type thing so is this kind of we spoke about this uh last time briefly and this is where you maybe your objective is to host m some yep. monthly events and things yep. is that still where yep. okay 
Definitely. So is so, that something that you're, you're envisioning would be done collectively as a board or as, a, as an individual? No, 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 as a board. But I would be the one that would, you know, talk about, come back and say, that, hey, guys, I'm thinking this, this, and this. What do you think? You know what I mean? Not as an individual. But then maybe I would send an email to all the people once we get a list. You know what I mean? Or I'm not trying to dump work on you or Annie or any. You have enough on your plate. But if you're willing to send it out once we talk about it, that's fine. But I'm not trying to make this board make your job and Annie's job any more fuller. So, yes, so I think that, again, I, 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 would, I would make the recommendation that I think it would be better if you did subcommittees within the group to tackle each item and then come back to the to the board and report i think that from an events perspective it will make a lot of sense because they can meet one-on-one -on -one, they can call each other up without having to worry about open meeting law then they can facilitate a meeting through me or with me with somebody else with the recreation committee so it's not as you know one person doing something to bring it back for a discussion so like there's a there's a couple of people but you still get to make a determination as to how you would like to be involved and you can still participate if you're not on the subcommittee. The same with the businesses. I think it would be really helpful to have uh, a discussion with the businesses, but not all businesses are going to want to come and participate in an open meeting like session like this and sit down and have a back and forth with the board. It might feel more interrogation type oriented back and forth. It might be nice to have a nice sit down with the two members who are focused on business outreach and then those two individuals sit specifically with the businesses outside of this type of format and whether or not that person wants to come in and present something or whether or not they do not, you can kind of share what that conversation kind of resulted in and some of the information or you could generalize it where you say we've talked to a multiple different businesses and they have expressed. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, so I think it might I be just, easier that way. And not trying to be negative, but maybe it's different now, but before, if you take a committee and then you break it up, it always seemed like you have a hard time getting the people you know what I mean, to get the final, you know what I'm saying? So I was thinking of talking to all those people and having the conversation with them, and then maybe, you know, we, I come back and talk to them, but we can try doing subcommittees and see how it goes. I'm, I'm open to it. If you want to try doing that, we can try doing subcommittees, you know? No, I, it was just based upon what I was hearing. It just seemed yeah. like that would be like there's a couple of people more focused on events and community. There's a couple of people yeah. who are more focused on, on, on business yeah. feedback. If and anyone else wants to help me on the board, that's great. I mean, I'm not saying just me. I'm saying... If anyone wants, wants to do with it, I'm good with that. Even if there's two people on the board or whatever, I'm fine. The purview of the board, so whatever you would but like. But how do. many people can talk outside the board without having meeting laws? Like, you can't have three people discussing, you know what I mean? Cause with the, as we said, with a seven-member board, you would be able to have three people. Okay. So but three you would people. not be able to have four. Right, so three, three people. Well, can I, can I just chime in real quick? I mean, we're, we're all local businesses. Right, we, you know, business owners, you know, what we do day in and day out to go, you know, have outreach to other business owners within the global community or, or prospective uh, businesses that come into the community. I mean, we can all have conversations with other businesses where we don't necessarily need to be represented as the uh, you know, economic development committee. I, I think at the end of the day, just socializing with people and, and bringing things back for ideas and then, you know, whether or not we pull something in formally into uh, some some body would, would be a separate thing. Is, he, is that true? Or I, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, I, I obviously I speak to several businesses every day. No, no, no. That's definitely not what that was at least my intent. You're, you're always welcome to, to do business as usual and whatnot, just as like a, on behalf of the board, you wouldn't be able to, to say that working with the Economic Development Committee, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts about this because the board is looking at this in uh, an open with more than three members present about that. But if you were talking to another business or whatever on your day-to-day -day operation, if you ran into them in the coffee shop or if you decided to go and you saw them out on the sidewalk or you were at a meeting together, none of that would be in violation because you're not operating as, uh, as a member of the board at that particular point in time. It's only when you act in the capacity of such that it could get a little bit on the um, open meeting law type of violation if you're, you're, you're looking to do anything like that. Um, Brian, are you um, maybe saying that it could be a little bit superfluous, that that's what we're doing, business owners are doing all the time anyway, that you don't really need a subcommittee? Or 
Yeah, I mean, I, I guess to a degree, yeah. So, I mean, my, my, my thought is that, for instance, let, let's talk about, you know, uh, Christmas lights or holiday lights or Elm Square, you know, light up the park. You know, if, if I'm reaching out to a bunch of different businesses and say, hey, you know, we, we stepped up last year, uh, you know, we, we had, you know, Dave Gilfoyle stepped up and we want to try to really make this a big thing. Um, you know, would, would you be interested? I, I think that's just a, a simple call. Am I acting in, uh, I, I guess, capacity of the economic uh, development committee? I, I, I guess I don't think I am, but, you know, I don't, I don't know. Are we, are we paying ourselves into some sort of regulatory bureaucracy here? I, I don't really want to be in that capacity when I'm just having conversations with other business owners here locally. So I think what I was trying to think, what I was trying to say would be if, let's just say we're going to host a business thing someplace. I would go out and talk to the people and say, hey, we're thinking of hosting the businesses at, let's just say, Pub 97. I would get kind of get a feel for it, get everyone, okay, I can come, I can come, I can come. I'll come back to the meeting and say, hey, listen, I'll always have known you're okay with it. I'll come back and say, okay, we got this, this, and this. We're going to meet, and that's what I was kind of thinking. And then also... I was trying to have the conversation, which I would probably do anyway, with any business person and say, what do you think Grover needs? Are you, do you want to come into a meeting and, and sit with us and talk in a public meeting? That's the, what I'm talking about, what I want to do. You know what I, mean? I want to try and be a voice now, you know what I mean, saying, we have the meeting, we have the, we, we have the forum, come on in and let's talk. You know, that, you know what I mean? That's yeah. all I was saying. Yeah. So, um just it's still understanding my capacity or what how I can contribute but and especially being very new to the community and new business owner um, a more formal approach like the list of every single business in Groveland to make sure that we it be a written reach out to everyone so that we're not no one's oh look oh I, no one asked me about that just I trying to be as inclusive as possible and I'm so happy to help with anything like that, administrative stuff, or um, I'm, I'm just adding that yep, to yep. No, your, I'm, I'm the, you. the, the, yep. the approach. I'm with you. As far as. Um, so that would be probably would be the first step. So yeah. To, to and get I'd a like, list of all yeah, the businesses yeah. in Groveland, and then maybe we get the list compiled together, and maybe I take, make the calls and say, hey, yeah. we've already, um, as a board, discussed okay we're thinking of having here there and then and I, I don't think it, yeah. it should be Rebecca in you know what I mean and I'm trying not to dump more responsibility and I'm very happy to help with any yeah, written so correspondence so and things like that so I think subcommittees are yeah. actually a good idea because it takes ownership and um, just um, I, I don't know just I guess I, I like the idea of the subcommittees and um, so, Especially so, being able to work with someone who's very familiar with the community. And, so, uh, how would you envision having subcommittees other than every person that wanted to do a certain thing would have to go out and would have to advertise for a subcommittee, correct, Rebecca? No, I, I think it's very simple. It doesn't, and like to, to go back to, to Brian's concern, you can have as many conversations as you want as a business owner. This is not to deter you to operate in any fashion whatsoever, but if there's a specific task of the board, that you're yeah. looking to fulfill that right. becomes under the, the board's purview but if you right. go out and talk to anybody you're fine to talk to anybody and do whatever you want it's just that if we you as a group decide that you collectively want to move forward in a fashion you just have to be careful in some instances where there could be a potential violation but it would be very rare for that to happen I just suggested the subcommittees because I think it's a more efficient way to itemize the issues that the committee would like to tackle. You want to tackle community events, you want to tackle business outreach, you want to talk about site feasibility, you want to talk about different areas. So if you break those out into items, then each subcommittee would manage that and you would have an opportunity to talk offline and then come back to the board and collectively report your findings. We reached out to A, B, C, and D and they feel this. Or we talked to a, B, and C, and we're going to do these three events on this thing. And that way the board can be like, oh, we like that. Or, hey, did you also consider this? Or, hey, maybe we should do this. Or we should invite them in. Are they willing to come and talk to us? Or, oh, did you look at any additional 
site surveys that were done on this particular site to see if there was any you know market research we should take into consideration when advocating so each subcommittee would be responsible for a set amount of work that they would do on their own so then you wouldn't task me with any additional uh -huh. duties because that that group is creating the list but it's right. uh, two people not just one sole right. person right. taking on all that so maybe what we should do tonight then is come up with task that's Period. where I'm thinking because right. you so, know with community events um, yep. business outreach and kind of break that down as a starting point and so you want to come up so we're going to do the first one's going to be community events right okay and the next one would be um, business, business outreach, outreach. Okay, anyone else? And then as, as businesses in the, in the community, I mean, what about looking at, I know that, okay. lo what about like looking at like resources? Like, I mean, if there's somebody who, you know, is, what would be beneficial for some of the businesses in town? Like looking at, you know, from a downtown's perspective and a town center perspective, would it be a, a beneficial to take the parking study to the next step? Would it be beneficial to update the market analysis? Would it be beneficial to look at the infrastructure along one? So we'd call that. We'd call that. So I don't. I don't know. Is, is that something that the board would like to look at? I, mean, I think it's and, an important part. As to I what? I think it's an important part, for sure. I mean, we've already got the work started. Why not carry on with it, right? So does it make sense to separate it out too and then maybe have a focus of the, the, the downtown, like the town center as one of the task items of looking at where they have a little bit more of a unique challenge with the, the central location, the space, right. the space, the parking, parking, the inability to kind of expand outward and then focus on another corridor and then, you know, take it, like you said, phase it in different ways. I mean, we can always do different subcommittees but we could say that one would be you know specific to the town center and then another or, or one. we have the committee and then they say they start with that look at that and then they go to another area you know what I mean maybe so we don't have to keep making more more a more layer maybe that one committee that's what their task would be like you know, resources resources so we're gonna call it town resources yep okay and that would take kind of what we have going on now to the next level so town re And a lot of times, we, we, me, I'll speak for me, I don't know what has already been started in the town, kind of like, so you're going to have to help us say, but, you know, we're here, we need to get to there, so we're here to help you. you know, it, it, we don't know, I don't know if you guys know, I don't know, but it would help if you said, you know, we're already downtown, we could bring this to the next level, and if it's a town resource committee, they can help bring it along. That's what we're here for. And by having committees, we're not duplicating resources and a point person so that not three people are coming to you for the same thing. Yeah. So, so we have a town resource we're talking about, okay? Anything else? Is it three good for now or you want? I think three is a good, good starting point in my personal opinion. Okay. I think three is All good. Right. So we have the other topic, in, in, invitation to the town businesses. So that's what I was kind of talking about earlier was do we have someone, do we need a form of board to do that or do one of us want to go out and say, hey, we're going to have a get together at Pub 97 or wherever. I mean, you know, I'm trying to say, what do you think? I'm, I mean, I, t well, I think, oh, I, sorry. I think, I think that is the subcommittee of you know, business outreach, right? Put it under outreach? <laughs> Okay. Would it make sense to draft, um, we can speak about this separately, yep. but yep. to go ahead and draft some written correspondence introducing ourselves as this committee and, yep. you know, and incur you know, and letting them know that we will we'll be reaching out and mm -hmm. start in the list background information as far as, um, the point of you know right. as far as what the goal of bringing us together right. for a common goal but mm -hmm. just start and I'm happy to help to work on that sure. with you yep. like, obviously you know everyone but yep. I definitely can do um, so do you, are you thinking more of a like a, a drop draft up a letter and get it out to them type thing like an like a almost like a letter saying we're doing this now I uh, think it's a good and start. then if we had a business a list of what I was saying earlier of all the businesses we could get it out we, you know what I'm saying? If we had a list of all the businesses, 
formatted on a piece of paper and then we have this I think that's a good start I think okay. that's the start of every business that exists in yep. Groveland no yep. one's excluded and that doesn't yep. matter what yep. you do or have or and then that's who we are and then of you know that gives them the opportunity to reach out to us then we you will start as the right to yeah you know, and then obviously it's, we'll be coming up with a you know the, the first time that we bring everyone together but right. I, I think definitely just an introduction is there, a, to everyone. is there a business list of all the businesses in town do you know I know that I had originally started to assemble one when I first started uh, as a town planner um, but I don't think it's very comprehensive but I do recall a discussion with Brian at one point in time where you might have added some businesses that to my existing list do you recall I'm sorry I'm, it's like very fuzzy but I remember we had talked about a list yeah I mean I, I started I, I think I took what you guys had which was um, I think what you had were um, I guess where someone needed like a town permit or something like that but there's a way to kind of swim upstream as well to find out entities, you know, are there companies that are LLC, S Corps, C Corps that are, uh, that have workers comp and they're headquartered in both. You know, there's, there's a few different ways to kind of pull together a list to kind of get an idea as to who's there. Uh, I think just pulling as many of the data points as we can together into one repository would be probably the best way to do it. But if you want to kind of dust off what you had, Rebecca, I can dust off what I had, and then maybe we can share it with the group and then figure out, okay, who else do you know? It's not going to be a perfect list, but obviously we're not going to down either, so it shouldn't be too hard to kind of... So maybe... On. Right, so maybe what we do in the in the next meeting is Rebecca and Brian's list, and then we come in with list to try and. Could we talk to the town clerk maybe about a business license? You know, every two years you have to renew that. Is there any way we could use resources can, from her? I can send her a note. I do know that they have business business, excuse me, business licenses, but I'm not sure if she has like a running list. But I'll definitely ask. So maybe yeah. in the next meeting we all can bring in what we know, even though we might duplicate it and. Then we'll that will get us to the point we can compile a list and we'll and we'll maybe break that down into like categories of to yeah. like types of work so we're not all making lists with the same people so right exactly you know and then you know that once we bring then. the list in what we'll do is we'll we'll go through and say we have we all have one company we'll knock that out and what have you so so that would be for the next meeting we're going to bring in the business list all of us will bring it in and then we'll work on that next meeting everyone yeah, good with that So going forward, I think we have enough enough items for today. We can start with this, and we can move it forward. Next time we'll find we'll 
we fine tune comb it a little bit more. Rebecca, is there any anything that you guys have got going on that you would like this committee to see and work on that you know that would help move forward that we don't know about type thing? No, not necessarily. Like I said, I think that the biggest challenge for us has also been understanding what it is that the businesses need from us and how we can collaborate and partner in right. order to, to make those things happen, whether it's, you know, apply for grants and vacant yep. store windows or apply for infrastructure improvements yep. that will benefit the benefit that benefit the business within the area so just having a open, more open lines of communication as to what is what is it that the the businesses would like the town and in what we can capacity right. to to help and to to make growth in a place they want to stay right that would that would definitely be a start with the business is my question to you would be what do you think and it's i know i've said it before but it's, it's bigger and broader, but like we're talking about the development of 150 Center Street, and we're talking about other areas. What do you think this board could do to help, th on that end of things, to help bring the taxes down? It, do you think it's, forget it, it's not going to happen type thing? No, I mean, definitely. Too, we just it's had too big for, for us to handle. We just had the feasibility study that we are about to wrap up for 150 Center Street. There was a presentation given to the Board of Selectmen just the other day. Um, so there were some comments made and some edits that need to be done to the presentation and to the report and that's going to be finalized. So that will be shared with the committee for um, their review. Um, I'm going to be sending out in my, my monthly newsletter another push for uh, feedback for the comprehensive master plan that is very much up the economic development uh, committee's alley to weigh in as, as much as you possibly can in terms of what it is that you envision for the next five years for Groveland because that will in fact give us an opportunity to apply for grants and say that you know we've reached out to the, peop uh, the people in Grove and we've reached out to the businesses. They want to see an overlay here for zoning so that we can and expand housing or they want to see an overlay here so that we can you know build beyond the, the current height requirements so that the businesses can get the mixed use and get the retail on the bottom and the, and the housing on the top. So there's a lot of different ways that the, the comprehensive master plan plays into the future because it gives us that blueprint. It's, in no way concrete it doesn't say we right. will do right. but it is guidance for the town to say well it was in the master plan and we we, we had public hearings multiple and we had public right. engagement so sessions multiple we had surveys so i think if the the committee could help us get some final um feedback on that draft report which is online and again will be sent out uh, in my newsletter tomorrow uh it would be helpful and can also that's all a copy of it yes i can okay so we all can look it over but my question to you again would be and maybe I'm saying this all wrong. I'm trying to see if there's a shorter, short term that we can do to help with the town. Like we just had to go for an override. I mean, I know everything takes time. It's a process. It's government. I get all that. But there's really nothing short term we can do other than build the business people up, let them be involved, get them involved type thing. As far as redevelopment or anything like that, it's in the big business plan. Yeah, and it's it something that's it's it's a process yeah that stuff takes a long time it, it is a, a very a long process of trying to figure out the next steps with that so unfortunately there is no miracle cure and there is no right away type of thing but i think that just helping uh the business su succeed and want to stay here um is, or is help the, them stay in business exactly is 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 very much the the right. goal for and sure and that's through the community you know yeah, I, mean? I think like that you do these events Businesses are a part of it. They donate. They're showing their face. They're doing the right thing. The residents see that. They meet you. Oh, what a great person yep. they are. Next thing you know, now that business is working in town for yep. the residents. That's what it should be. Right. You have really, really good businesses here. Mm -hmm. And there's people coming from different towns and working here. It should be people that are from this town mm -hmm. um, working here. I know that's not always the case, but it helps when you see in these businesses they now we can have these awesome events in the town you know what i mean whether it be for christmas or easter or whatever you know i'd love to see a bunch of kids running around getting easter eggs you know all over the front of town hall i'd love to see that you know so it but the businesses help out a little and i mean let's face the facts a few hundred dollars over the course of a year isn't a big deal but now to the town it is though because they have a budget in place and these you can't have these things but if every business kicks in a couple hundred bucks on each event what an amazing event we could put on for the whole community to have so i think i, I the master plan and the building and the mixed use that's like long-term scope but i think as of right now a good way to like rejuvenate the business in town is to get them involved 
showing their face, make it known, you know, that they're here to support and help and, and, and get the ball rolling for everyone. All right, so I think we covered most of these other topics already, kind of in that discussion already. So coming, <clears throat> coming out of this meeting, we're going to come back with a, a final breakdown on what we discussed, the four items, and everyone can do a think, you know, thinking on what the next meeting. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll come out of the next meeting knowing that. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, how are you doing? Angus Jennings, how are you? Oh, hey, Bill Dunn. Hi, Bill. Monica Carbone. Hi. Steve Collins. Hi, how are Hi. you? Good, and you? Good, thank you. We're kind of just talking about coming up with some um, objectives for the next meeting, what we're thinking to do as far as having going forward and having the board um, move forward on with a mission and a charge of the board. Great. And so far, we come out with community events, business outreach, town resources, um, and we're thinking of like a business letter, business list of all the businesses in town. Um, do you have something you want to say? I think we were um, mainly trying to focus in on and how each of the members could kind of give themselves a task to kind of help push this initiative forward. So we we're talking about that. Um, the only other thing I was going to say that would be something we should take into consideration and, and put on as a future item too is just looking at like when parcels become vacant the potential for reuse of that property or marketing of that property and being involved in I'm sorry when it, I didn't hear when what was reuse or marketing of that property I mean as we know the uh, property at Cedardale was on the market is still on the market there's a lot of talks about making that a, a retail uh, residential development but there's also talks about keeping it within the recreational field realm with programming and stuff and so I think it'd be helpful to have the committee start to take a look at when things like that come up that we're being more proactive about it um, just you know letting them know that we'd like to work with them and and yep. do what's best for the, the the community and how we can take a look at that from a larger comprehensive perspective so another item I think that might be uh, important for the committee to kind of focus in on a I little would put bit that down. yeah yeah and that makes sense because I mean then we can take a look at I know st we were saying it's, it's harder and longer to try and redevelop, but this would be if it's in front of us and we can help the property be sold and then be reused in the right manner that would help possibly bring taxes in or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know if houses bring a lot of money in. You know, I, I mean, I, when I was around, I always thought it added more to the, <laughs> the, the uh, bottom line, but. It's interesting at the, the uh, feasibility study that just happened at the Board of Selectmen meeting, um, houses really do bring in the majority of the revenue, of the revenue um, as opposed to some of the we businesses. Don't have anything, right? So it was it was very. I mean, the figures still need to be updated, but the figures that they did share was a little bit alarming to see how much more revenue came in from the development of the residential units as opposed to the commercial side that was being proposed. But the net, oh, but oh, the oh, net cost you. is. Yeah, I mean, I think I my data goes back a while, but there was a major study, um, I don't know, 10 years ago um, by a group in Boston, and it, it did demonstrate that the net cost of a unit of housing based on typical household size, number of kids in the schools is a, is a net loss for a community. So I don't, that's going to vary by community. It's going to have a lot to right. do with assessed values, so, but. And I always thought maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm thinking a net loss with a, with a home versus a business a business you're not putting a kid in school there's a pure gain you know it, you know what i mean it's it's like and you're saying no it, it came out the other way so the 150 center street feasibility study showed opposite because we're talking about a condensed uh area we're talking about yeah, 17 smaller. acres we're talking about 55 housing units yep. and a smaller scale yep. commercial development right the yeah. small scale and rental and apartments that's going to be a different calculation than a single family house right. yeah. exactly so the the calculations right. that they came up with that way was a little bit different right so if you were to, to quickly talk about 150 center versus um, over in Salem, New Hampshire, um, they just developed it, um, that big development over there, um, Tuscan Marketplace. Oh, yeah. You're not going to turn 150 cent center street into a, a, a money-making thing because 
you don't have the volume of land, you don't have the, 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 the right setup to put the right business in. So whatever goes in there, it could be, we ha you'd have to look at a mixed use that would be somewhat come out at a profit than a loss to the town. It wouldn't make sense to do it. So a lot of what we had discussed in terms of 150 Center, is that as we know, it's a, you know, a 60 acre parcel and we weren't necessarily looking to utilize the 60 acres. There's a lot of different right. parameters to come right. into play, whether it be wetland zoning, yep, exactly. uh, habitat, which is a, a, a big thing. And also we don't want to over maximize and or over develop a certain particular area given our infrastructure and our proximity to the uh, highways, et cetera. So, and the schematics came up with the different engagement yep. sessions. They were only really looking at utilizing of the 60 acres about 17 acres, yeah. 16 to 17 acres. And a lot of that included a lot of open space. So it included community gardens, performance centers, uh, outdoor pavilion, playground, community center, and all of those are not revenue generating for the town. Uh, but given the feedback that was done through the engagement session, the a majority of the residents and those that participated don't necessarily want to see that much housing or that much business. They would rather have a more interactive play space to have people be able to enjoy other than just for the current recreational area such as the Pines, which is more sports oriented instead of a community gathering space. Uh, but obviously they also wanted to see more of the breweries type of setup with the outdoor picnic tables and eateries and restaurants and things where they don't have to go to Havel, they don't have to go to Salem, New Hampshire, they can enjoy those benefits here in town. So there's space that's uh, light industrial, which would allow for that. And they're only looking at about 10,000 square feet um, in addition to the 4,000 square feet of restaurant space as the original preferred schematic uh, takes into consideration. And then for uh, the residential component, they were taking, again, the feedback of the community, trying to be mindful of the fact that they did not want to see housing and then the constraints that we have with our current uh, schools and things of that nature. So they're only looking at about 55 units that would be clustered around the community space. And then all of that would be surrounded by a fitness trail that would go and connect all of these spaces. And then that would tie into the 100 plus acres of conservation protected land that we have in the back, which is the former Angelini um, and Mattingly property that then connects down over to 46 Washington Street and around that area and to the community trail um, and leaving the rest of the space completely and utterly untouched. Mm -hmm. um, so those were a lot of the things that they had talked about. And as part of that, they had done a you know a schematic of the amount of area that that would all take and the estimated um, impact of that um, and they were taking a look at you know the residential property taxes the commercial property taxes the projected estimated CPA revenue uh, in addition to um, the expenses of the housing units and commercial employees and the cost to public schools um, and they identified a, a surplus in some of their figures to about two hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars in the in the red or pro, in, into the, the in the black in the plus toward the town mm -hmm. who, who did the study so RKG and yeah. Nietzsche engineering yeah RK they're kind of the yeah that's what they do so oh. I'll share this report this is a presentation that they just gave to the Board of Selectmen so I'll share this with the committee as well it's yep. not the final report the final report I'll also share with the committee but it's a good way to take a look at like we said a, a site and more of a comprehensive view from this committee's perspective and weigh in and try and help figure out exactly what suits the community's needs right so my quick a quick question I know it's down the road so would that say that 17 acres be given off to a developer and let him develop it type thing or that's the conversation but down the road so the the process would be that it would be a disposition so we would be selling them a portion of the property um, and we would not be landowners we didn't talk about a ground lease kind of right. option right. it was more so just those 17 acres would then be you know an RFP would be developed the RFP would be very specific about what it is that the town would be looking for and then we would go up for procurement and somebody would need to bid the project based upon those specifications so they couldn't yeah. just come in and say you know what i don't like your plan i'm going right. to build you it know 200 units stone. yeah exactly all edged in stone and we're going to know at the end of the day what goes there what's going to happen and everything and then they they come in and say okay i'll do it for x amount or whatever and okay. the only other option to uh, excuse me the only other portion of that as well is that we'll need to take into consideration zoning so we will have right. to make some zoning changes which we'll have to go through that process again so it's not like a like we mentioned earlier unfortunately it's not like a no it's not next gonna happen day overnight. kind of thing we're talking about a two-year right. process right 
I know when you go into Vermont and places like that, they have like these coffee plate, like coffee houses, coffee factories, and they they surround it like you're talking about. With it, it's in a complex, but it has housing around it and what have you, and it's for the family to go in. You can watch the coffee being made and stuff like that. I think that's more of what you're talking about, kind of on that line, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Something on that line. The the whole um, I forget which one that was recently done, but it's the whole idea that like brings people to the center. So like right. you can get a right. coffee and then yep. go to the pavilion and gather with family, listen yep. to music at nighttime. Yep. There's like right. the string lights, like that kind of. Not Linfield. What it, uh, yeah. do you know? Yeah. Linfield? Is it like the, yeah, Linfield Marketplace? I, I Do you know if there's anyone? That. I know it's. <laughs> and the, I was Do the you know of any developer permit for that? See, so you know exactly I'm, what I'm, I'm talking I'm about. So like that type yeah. of I forget what it's called. There's a term for it, but that uh, the community focused center bringing bringing people in. Right. Yeah. Do you know yeah. of any developer that would be interested? Is there people out there that would be interested in doing that? That's the hard part because if there's not enough housing, it doesn't make it profitable for them to, to participate. So there's a couple of developers who are out there now. There's a big development going on at the, I think it's not the Polaroid, but in, it's in Littleton or somewhere out in that area where they're doing the same type of concept, but there's a ton of housing that's going on a lot with it. Um, so it, it becomes a, a risk analysis for the, the, the developer to figure out, is this going to be profitable for them right. in the long run? Right. I think they just did kind of one in North Andover on 114 in North Andover. They have all like little coffee places downstairs and then upstairs is like condominiums, apartments. I don't know what it is, but kind of a small thing, not too big. But anyway, we talked about this. I, I have a, I have, and, and I'm new to the party here i'm you know new to yeah. town new to, yep. to kind of just learning all this stuff in terms of you know so so forgive me if this is known but um has the town done any kind of market study to understand like what kind of absorption of of like retail or commercial what kind of what the market support is for that without undermining ex existing businesses so or is that some obviously developers are going to do that analysis but has the town done its own kind of assessment of market like a market needs in certain study? areas so geographic centered so 150 center for the rkg and then we did one specific to the town center so that was that study that you're referring to was solicited by the town and it was specifically it was part of the mass development grant that we got so got in it. rkg was just for 150 center and then the other one um, was Peg Barringer and it was an MDI grant and that was specific to the town center because okay. that has its unique challenges with Havel like right over the bridge. Okay. So it was looking at economic impact of development scenario, but it was also looking at market support. For market like analysis. What, what type of. Where people are driving. What type of space would be supported based on consumer spending and things. Yes, because it would it takes into consideration where people are driving for those resources, how far are they willing yep. to drive, yep. what the industries are, what great. the market's showing. But that's great. The de the town center one was done a while ago, so that's okay. got to be a little outdated. But the 150 Center Street is the one that they just did recently. Great, yeah. We can send that. Love to see that. Yeah, I can do that for sure. The one, uh, the Elm Street that was done in 2019, I read through that today, and that's a lot of that information is in there. Okay. Yeah. On the and is that and again forgive my uh, ignorance on this stuff is this uh, under the kind of oversight of the select board or the planning board who's who's kind of driving on on like engaging the consult who did they report to me great <laughs> <laughs> all right so so did they uh, are they going to be present or did they already present it so 150 publicly? center they just presented publicly they did not do the one back in 2019 because it, things got challenging with the elm square committee and the makeup so they presented but they presented to the elm square and they didn't get a chance to present to the board of selectmen but yeah. they did in fact present their report to the elm square committee and then 150 center like i said was just the other night at the board of selectmen great thank you yeah. <clears throat> okay so um, I think we've been through most of the items. We have an agenda for next meeting. Does anyone have anything else they want to say? For, for, for I, I, I was 5.30, right? Meeting was 5. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was... Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> I, I missed more than six minutes. Okay. So my question, Rebecca, would be 
on the meeting. I'm sorry. Me as, is it me as a chair? Should I be sending like a reminder out? She sent oh. reminder. It's on me. Oh, okay. I, okay. There okay. were multiple. Right, no problem. <laughs> You're fine. I could, like we did the last time. If you want to send me what you want to put on the agenda, yeah. I'll just. And I'd rather talk to you about it. Not that yeah. I know you're busy, but oh. I mean, I'm not trying to. You're fine. My own. And if anyone, if anyone here on this board has something they want to talk about for an agenda, right, please speak up. And you know, I'm only trying to facilitate it and get it rolling. So That's great. If yeah. you can, if you guys need it, and if you thought of something more that we talked about tonight, then please speak up and put it on. You know what I mean? So I may be repeating something that was talked about before I got here, uh, but I, as I understood, Bill, from what you said, that part of the goal was for each, or maybe Rebecca, one of you said, for each member to kind of self-identify where they might be able to add value. Yep. Um, my kind of particular knowledge is on zoning and um, like different economic development strategies like, like right. TIFFs or DIFFs or uh, even 40R, um, you know, as something. So I'd love to kind of dig in on, on what, which of those tools in the kind of state toolbox might, yep. might right. and, and some of those may be already in place here and I just don't know yet. But I'd love to help just see which of those might be applicable. Uh, I spent about eight years in consulting the cities and towns and often was engaged to, to you know, typically with a targeted area, whether a yeah. town center or a mill yeah. renovation yeah. or something, to, and to help advise on what, what could help attract private investment to those locations. Yeah. So. so what I was saying in the beginning of the meeting <clears throat> is I was trying to get each board member to kind of say, like you just said, and Steve is very compassion about the town um, activities and what have you I was trying to just say everyone speak up on what you what you are compassionate about I'm compassionate about trying to help the town people the tax people not pay as much tax or whatever and however we can help them not do that but everyone ha and we'll still work as a team but yep. every meeting you think about what you want us Steve thinks about what he wants so we come in we talk about it and we move forward that way. I know Brian, I think he's still up there, but Brian, um, he was saying that he has a list he's going to bring in next week. Um, so hopefully as we, as we keep rolling it forward, we'll get this all smoothed out. That so sounds great. Need to Angus. We'll, we'll have to figure out if we can be on the same room uh, next week. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's your turn to be remote this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any, everyone all set? So you just okay. have the minutes too. Oh, I'm sorry. So we have to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Have they been read? Um, I was good with them. Anyway, I know you weren't here. Were you here? I, I was remote, but I yeah. would abstain because I okay. haven't read okay. them. But you all set, Steve? Yeah. Right, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve the minutes from last meeting. Yeah. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Brian? Aye. Okay, no, all good. Abstain. Okay. In one abstain, yep. Yeah. All right, so um, I think we got all our stuff done and we'll make, get a motion to adjourn at, I think it looks like six, what? 651. 51. Five. Uh, 551, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. 551. Yeah. Second. Uh, Second. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. Thank and you. Hopefully, next meeting we can. Get when up. is the next meeting? Do we know? Next meeting would be when? when, when so everyone's good? Oh, your, your mic's off. Um, next meeting, who? Be the end of the last Thursday of the month at 5 p.m. I think was the plan that yep. everyone wanted. All right. So I don't know if that's the 20, Halloween. 26th of October. On Halloween? Yeah. Oof. My son's not going to be happy. The 26th of October. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's not Halloween. 26th of October. I guess today is Thursday. <laughs> at 5 p.m. October 26th at 5 p.m. You have that, Brian? Okay, sounds good. All right, so now I think we're good. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.